Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that's ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth, and then it continues on after the, the alcohol teaching. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So there's just a sampling of the instruction also that's being given by the virtuous woman at home to her children. This goes above and beyond the lesson plan for the academics. Make sure that this is a part of the teaching for your children as well. It's easy to just say, okay, here's my schedule. We've got this whole program. We bought it. It's a lesson plan, everything. It's nice. It's, it's uh, nice to have that stuff already built out. But don't forget this wisdom. And teaching your children wisdom like this. It's so important for them. There's so many things I'm thankful that I learned from my parents when I was younger. But there's also so many things I wish I would have learned yeah. from them when I was younger, too. And, you know, I don't want to be critical of my own parents. I, I you know, appreciate everything they've done for me. But at the same time, I didn't have a formalized you know, daily Bible school or understanding and teaching and things like that. I just picked up things along the way. I, who knows how, I don't know how, however you learn things at home, but it wasn't anything that was very well structured. Um, your children also need to learn how to interact with other people. You know, when, you, when you're, if you're homeschooling and, and, and training them up at home, however you teach them at home and whatever you allow them to get away with at home, they're going to feel like they can do the same thing out in public. So make sure you're keeping your children, you know, learning manners and being respectful and not just being so sloppy about it and going, well, we're at home, who cares anyways? No. If they're not, if not able to do it even at home, then how are you going to expect them to be able to do it outside of the home? They need to be taught and trained in repetition over and over and over again, this is how we do things. You're going to sit down, you're going to sit still, we're, going to, you know, we're all going to sit together as a family, no, we're not going to go you know, off in front of the TV and this and that, we're going to sit down, we're going to eat, you're going to ask politely, you're going to say please, thank you, whatever, you know, all the things that you should expect for your own children to be upright people in this world. And it, and it takes time and it takes effort. And the easy way is you say, well, forget it. I don't care. I'm tired. I don't want to deal with this anymore. That's not the right way. They need to be taught behavior that matches the principles taught in the Bible. Right? And again, I, look, I understand this because you may have a lot of things that you need to get done at home. You have a lot of jobs to do. And I'm a big proponent of sending the kids out to play. Right? I think they ought to be outside getting some sunlight, getting some activity, burning up their energy and everything else. But at the same time, you need to be able to deal with the problems that arise with the children appropriately as well and not just kind of forget about them and ignore them. And you know, what I mean by that is, is just there's certain things that they learn among themselves that aren't always good things. And I know there's a big difference between boys and girls. And my boys are still pretty young, but boys have a tendency to be more physical, right? And a lot, a lot easier for them to start getting into fights and stuff. But you got to realize, you know, I know that among kids, fights happen, but we don't promote fighting at home. I discipline fighting. There should be no, you know, none of this hitting back and forth. That is not a biblical thing. That, that people just get in and fight. You know, the Bible says that, that a bishop is not supposed to be a striker. But it's not just for a bishop. I mean, that's for everybody. That's just something that's like, hey, if you're a striker, you can't be this. But we should all strive to, to meet whatever qualifications there are in Scripture of someone who's being held to a higher standard. So, you know, the children need to be punished appropriately. They can't just be let, let's let loose and run wild. And the hard part about that is when you've got a bunch of other things going on. But set your priorities right to say, okay, well, the children are way more important than cleaning the oven is. So make sure you deal with the most important things first and that they at least have the priority. So when something comes up, 
I don't care if you're in the middle of doing the dishes. If someone needs to be corrected, correct them. So that they can, you know, because they're way more important. <laughs> and how they turn out. And those little things, it's easy to blow it off and say, well, normally I correct them, I'm not going to do it this time. Watch out for that because what that does is start to build a habit in your mind. You're just going to start saying, oh, well, I didn't do it last time. I, well, I, don't really, I definitely don't have the time to do it this time. And when you start just making those allowances, before you know it, it just become a habit and a routine for you not to do anything about it. 